Notion has recently released two new powerful features that make the software even more suitable for project management, putting it almost on pair to other specialized systems such as Jira or Asana. And these features are database sub-items that you can also think of as sub-tasks and dependencies that you can think of in a task management system. You can ensure that tasks have dependencies and you can visualize those dependencies in a timeline to make sure that as a project manager or as a developer or as a person working on a task, you know that you need to complete something else before getting to work on a specific task if there is a dependency of any sort. So in this video, we're going to go through these two features, explore them, what they look like and implement them and understand all the implications behind each of these features for your Notion systems. And we'll do so by using the Word Without Email template that you, you can find in the description. It's a free template. And because we have a master task board here, this lends itself very well to an example of these new features, namely sub items and dependencies. They are particularly applicable for task management, but in Notion, because of its wide applicability, you can use these features in any database that you like. For example, some examples that they give on the official page are for organizational charts or for key results that you want to break down into sub items. You can be as inventive as you like with sub items and dependencies. And in this video, we're going to look at task management and how you can apply these features for that specific use case. Although once you understand how this works, you can implement it across any database that you see fit based on your needs. Let's get started here on this page. We have a database here that is called master task mode. Let's get right into it because that's what we're going to use to implement the new feature and look at how it can be useful or not useful for your specific use case or for a generic task management use case that matter. The first thing to note is that, for example, here in the master task board, the first view that we have is a board view and the new features, namely sub items and dependencies are on the three dots right here, whenever you have a database and you will see here that there are new options on this panel. However, these new options only apply to a specific view and that view is a table view. So in a board view, you will not have that option to visualize your items and sub items directly in a board view, but you can set those up in a table view instead. So I'm going to open the table here and we're going to start first with the first new feature that is sub items. In this case for us, that is going to be sub tasks. So I'm going to go to the three dots and then here you see there is a new option that says sub items. When I click on it, you will see that I can rename it. In this case, I want to have a sub task and I want to have a parent task. And you can see here, the visualization says that there is a parent task and then within that, you can create multiple sub tasks. Then I'm going to do create and here, you will see that now on the table, we have these toggles that I can expand to create new sub items. So for example, we have task one, let's say, and we know that this is a big task. They want to break down into sub items. I can already open it up and then create a new sub item. And that sub item is essentially part of my master task mode that is a database in Notion. And so all the properties work in exactly the same way. So we have the bucket, if you want to relate it, the status, the due date, as well as the due date and the priority level. And so in here then, whenever you open the item, you will see the exact same view as for the parent item. And one interesting thing that you will notice here is that we have two properties that reflect this change that we just made that are parent task and sub task. So essentially the way this feature works is that it creates new relations for us. And that's why we can have that parent child relation. Because now what Notion does is whenever you create a new sub item, it recognizes that this sub item is created within this parent item here. And that allows Notion to automatically create a relation, namely adding the relation to the parent task accordingly to where you created the task. So in this example, when I create a new sub item here, let's open it in full page and you will see that the parent task is task one, that is this one. And that's because this item that I just created is within the toggle of task one. So it's a child of task one and it doesn't have any subtasks, but fundamentally you can use this feature infinitely. So if item one has subtasks, then you can open it and create sub items for item one. And then if the sub item of item one has subtasks, you can break it down even more infinitesimally. Although I am not sure yet about the benefits of having that kind of hierarchy. I believe, especially for task management, one level of hierarchy is best because otherwise the system will become extremely complex. 
That is how it works essentially in the backend. One useful thing that you can do then when you open a task is that you can show the subtask as a page section. And you can do that by clicking on the name and then show as, and then you can do page section. So that all your subtasks are gonna be grouped right here whenever you add them automatically. So that whenever you have a parent task, you will see all the subtasks down here. Alternatively, you could create a template where you have the subtasks and the linked database view automatically added down here on the page. But there is not that much difference between having this page section and that linked database view. So that is how sub items work. The second feature is dependencies. And dependencies can only be viewed in a timeline view, at least for now, as I'm recording this video. So to have dependencies, you need to create a timeline view. In this case, a timeline view for us might be useful because in this master task board, we have a due date and a due date. And that signifies that oftentimes there is a span of time that the task needs to be completed within. So a timeline might make sense with the start date being the due date and the end date being the due date. So I'm going to create a timeline right now, right here. And I will use separate start and end dates. So in here, then the start date would be due date and the end date would be due date. And then open pages in, let's do center pick. And right here, you would see that from properties to group, these were the old, um, so to speak, functions that we already had in a Notion database. But right now we have two additional features, that is sub items and dependencies. So when it comes to sub items, we already set them up in the table view, so that is fine. We can leave it as it is because that feature is already added to this database. When it comes to dependencies, however, right now, there are no dependencies that we have implemented in our database yet. So I'm gonna come here, and if I wanna have dependencies, I'm gonna create a new relation. That's what you do. And then you can rename those if you like. But this look like useful names for a task management system because you wanna see what is blocking what and what task is blocked by what other task. And so that's a dependency. So we're going to create it. And now you will see that what we have are additional properties as well. And these are blocked by and blocking. So two additional relation properties have been created. So essentially a process that you would do manually until today is now automated by Notion with the new features. Whenever you create a new dependency, Notion will create the appropriate relations for you. And whenever you create new sub items, Notion will create those relations for you. In here, we have a timeline. And let's say that, let's go back here on the table. Let's redefine the due date and the due date for this task, for example. Then let's go here and let's define the due date here. And then we've got due date right there. So let's go back to timeline. We have some dates now that enable us to see a task, two tasks in this case, in the timeline view. Let's extend this one right there. Now we can really sort them by due date, ascending. And so for task one, we will see that, let's make it a bit shorter here. For task one, we will see that it still has a toggle because that signifies that this is a parent task. Whereas this other task doesn't have a toggle because it is a regular task. It is not a parent task. So in here, if I click to expand, you will see that I see item one, that is a subtask of task one. That is fine so far. So that is the sub items feature that we just saw. In addition to this feature, however, you can have dependencies and to create dependencies you can have another task here let's say task five so that is a task here and let's say that this task will start on the 2nd of january and i know that this task depends on this task right here so task five depends on task one and we can only start task five when task one is complete so there is a dependency between these two tasks to create the dependency i can come here drag and drop the arrow and now this is a visual indicator that tells me that task five is blocked by task one. So when I open task five, you will see that it says blocked by task one. And this task is blocking nothing for now. And that is how dependencies work. You can also create multiple dependencies for multiple tasks. So you can have another task here and you can create another dependency right here to this task as well. And maybe this one is a parent task. You want to break it down so you can maybe open it. And you can also add subtasks from here. Task add. Getting the task already from here. It's going to appear here. If you want to open it, you can open this one. You will see that it has a parent task. Nothing is blocking it or it is not blocked by anything. 
and so on. And then you can expand it and you will see these sub items or you can create them directly from here. And you can continue basically mapping your tasks, subtasks and dependencies directly on the timeline or on the table. And dependencies are very visual. And you can also step back and look at the quarter or the whole year based on what you're interested in in your timeline. And especially if you're mapping out a project, for example, where you have milestones, this view can be extremely helpful for you to sort of create a project chart or a Gantt chart of sorts that can help you set up your milestones and maybe send the project scope to the client to let them understand what the product might look like. And that is how Notion sub items work and also how Notion dependencies work. Essentially, on the three dots menu, you can enable them. And when it comes to dependencies, you can only enable them on a timeline view that needs to have date properties. And finally, in the backend, the way these features work is that they create relational properties for you automatically so that you don't have to. Essentially, they have wrapped a user-friendly UI to create relations that might be complicated to, to create if you don't know exactly how to do that in Notion or if you do not understand exactly how parent, child or dependent relationships work in a database. And that is it for now. Leave any questions or comments that you have down below. Thank you for watching and see you soon.